this screencast is based on module six, lesson six. Uh, it's based mostly on the problem set, which parallels the homework, so it should be very helpful. In this lesson, we investigate patterns in vertical and horizontal lines and interpret points on the plane as distances from the axes. Okay, number one, it says plot the following points and label them on the coordinate plane for A, B, C, and D. So let's begin. Let's first look at the coordinate plane that we're working with. We start with zero, we go to five tenths, and we see that we have one, two, three, four, five intervals between zero and five tenths. So each one of these must represent one tenth. So this would be one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, then to five tenths, and so on. Same with our uh, y axis as well. Let's first do A. We have three tenths and one tenth. And we've done that quite a few times, so I think that most of us know that we check out our x-axis first, then go to our y-axis, and we'll label that an A. And B is 3 tenths and 7 tenths. So we have 3 tenths. We're on the same vertical line, and we have to go up to 7 tenths. Label that B. C. 2 tenths and 9 tenths, so we have 2 tenths and 9 tenths, and we'll label that C. And we have 4 tenths and 9 tenths, so we go to the x-axis, 4 tenths and 9 tenths for our point D. It says, use a straight edge to construct line segments A, B, and C, D. So we're going to construct the line segments, and by a line segment we need endpoints. So I have A, B, so we're going to, again, I don't have a straight edge on this, and I haven't figured out how to do it on my iPad, but you are going to use a ruler to make our straight edge to do that. And C and D, we're going to combine these, and again, since it's a line segment, we're going to have endpoints. It asks for uh, B. Line segment blank is parallel to the x-axis and is perpendicular to the y. Well, for parallel, we're going to have to go in the same direction as this. So we can see we're parallel. CD is parallel to the x-axis. And again, if I continue this, and I made this a line, not a line segment, I could see that uh, CD, if it were a line, would intersect the y-axis at a right angle. Therefore, it would be perpendicular. So we will now say line segment CD is parallel to the x-axis and perpendicular to the y. C, line segment blank, is parallel to the y-axis and perpendicular to the x. So if I, again, looked at this, I can see that AB is perpendicular to the y-axis. And if I continued this and made it a line AB, it would intersect the x-axis at a right angle. So the answer, therefore, is A, A, B is parallel to the y-axis. Plot a point on AB that is not at the endpoints and label it U. So I need to find a point, and I, I could pick any of these points that fall on this line segment except for A and B themselves. So I'll simply select this one right here which is uh, 3 tenths and 3 tenths. A, the X and Y coordinates are the same. I'll label this U and I will put in my coordinates. It says label or plot a point on CD and line segment CD and label uh, name it V. Uh, okay, less choice here. We have a smaller line segment, and I'm going to now find my coordinates. And we have what do we have? We have three tenths for x and nine tenths for y. You'll notice that for this line segment, all the y coordinates are the same. Okay, it's all nine tenths, and for this line segment all the x-coordinates are the same, and that's part of the point of this lesson. For number two, we construct a line F, such that the y-coordinate for every point is three and one-half. 
Let's start with that before we go on to the second part. So we need to look at our y-axis. And I see that on my y-axis there's the three and a half. So again, I would want you to use a straight edge. I'm going to do my best to freehand this as evenly as I can. I have a line, so I'm going to have to have two arrows. And I'm going to label this G in a cursive G. So every point on F Every, every point on F has a Y coordinate of 3 and 1 half. Now we're going to construct a line G that has an X coordinate for every point that's 4 and a half. So I'm going to go along my X axis. I'm going to look for my 4 and a half. And the vertical line rising from that is my line that I'm looking for here. So again, doing my best freehanding it. Someday I'll find a nice uh, narrow tipped stylus. We'll label this G. And again, every point on G uh, has an X coordinate of four and a half. Now let's answer the questions. Line F is blank units from the X axis. By the way, this other one I mislabeled, so we're going to cross that out and we're going to put this in F. Okay, now how far is it from the X axis? Let's make our way up from the x-axis. So we're up one, two, three, three and one half. So we'll answer that question. Line F is three, we'll get the right tool, three and one half units from the x-axis. So we notice that the y coordinate is three and one half, which means the line is three and a half units from the x-axis. It says, give the coordinates of the point on line F that is one-half a unit from the y-axis. So we need to take a look here. We're going to go on line F right along here. We want to go one-half unit from the y-axis. So there's our half right there. So I'm going to uh, just kind of denote that point. And how, what are the coordinates? Well, my x is one-half. And my y is 3 and 1 half. It says with a blue pencil, shade the portion of the grid that is less than 3 and a half units from the x-axis. Well, what's less than 3 and a half units? If we look at our line, f, that's 3 and a half units. So I want all the values down here that are less than 3 and a half units. So we're going to shade that blue. Okay, not beautiful, but there it is. We've got that shaded blue. Now let's answer the questions. D, line G, is blank units from the y-axis. Well, I, I have to look at my uh, x-axis to find out how far it is away. And that would be four and a half. says give the coordinates for a point on line G that is five units from the x-axis. So I'm going on line G and I'm going to go up and I see that there's five. I can tell that by looking at my uh, y-axis there and there's my point that's five units away. It doesn't tell me to label that but now what are my coordinates? It would be four and one-half and my y coordinate would be 5. It now tells me with a red pencil shade the portion of the grid that is more than four and a half units. More than four and a half units away means we're going to be shading this stuff here because that line is exactly four and a half units. So we'll shade that in with the red. Alright, let's go on to the next slide. Okay, let's look at instructions for uh, A and B. It says, construct a line M that is perpendicular to the x-axis and 3 and 2 tenths units from the y-axis. Well, let's take a look first at our, our uh, scale here. And uh, we'll notice that we have from 0 to 1, I have intervals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, uh, what 
could I label each one of these? Well, since from 0 to 5, or 0 to 1, there's only 5, we need to label these by the 2 tenths. So if I label this, it would be 2 tenths, 4 tenths, 6 tenths, 8 tenths, and finally 1. I just want to show you that because it's important to figure out uh, what, what the value of these intervals are, especially when they're not all labeled. From there, we can extrapolate the rest. So now, let's go back to our task. We want to construct m that is perpendicular to the x-axis. Here's the x-axis. We want something that's going to intersect it at a right angle. So it's going to have to be a vertical line. And we want it 3 and 2 tenths units from the y-axis. So we need to measure the distance from the y-axis. And that starts with our uh, x-coordinate, actually. So again, distance from the y axis is my x coordinate. So let's go and look at x. There's 3, and I know each one of these is 2 tenths, so at the, right here would be 3 and 2 tenths. So I need to make my vertical line uh, at uh, 3 and 2 tenths on the x axis. So let's make that. And again, I am freehanding. Very thick nib on this thing. All right. And again, I expect you to do it with a rule. We are going to label this M. And it says construct a line that is 8 tenths units from the x-axis. And it's going to have to be parallel to the x-axis. So again, if we want 8 tenths units from the x-axis, we're going to have to look at the y-axis, uh, the y-coordinates here. And 2 tenths, 4 tenths, 6 tenths, 8 tenths. My line is going to have to go right there. So once again, I hate to freehand these, but uh, that's, that's what we have to do here. We're going to label this A. For C, it says construct a line that is parallel to the line M and halfway between M and the x-axis. Okay, so we know that the line has to be a vertical line. And halfway in between, well, uh, I can find the value for x here, and that's 3 and 2 tenths. So if I want to be half the distance between the 0 and uh, 3 and 2 tenths, I need half that value. So what's half of 3 and 2 tenths? I can divide that by 2. and I get 1 and 6 tenths. So line T is going to be 1 and 6 tenths. So I'm going to now look. What do I have? That's 1 and 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, oh, excuse me, 2 tenths, 4 tenths, 6 tenths right there. So I need a line right along here. All right. And I'll label that T. Construct a line H that is perpendicular to line T and passes through point 1 and 2 tenths and 2 and 4 tenths. So let's find that uh, point that's 1 and 2 tenths. So we're 1 and 2 tenths from the X. And we need to find the Y. So I'm going to go along this line, 1 and 2 tenths. 2 and 4 tenths are going to be right there. Okay, so again, we have to be perpendicular to T, so it's going to intersect T at a right angle. So we're going to have to be not a vertical, but a horizontal line. And we'll label that H fairly complex instructions here. All right, let's go on to continue through this problem. Okay, I've kind of done this one ahead of time. It says, use the blue pencil to shade the region that contains the points that are more than 1 and 6 tenths units and less than 3 and 2 tenths units from the y-axis. So what did we need to do? We have our uh, line T, that is 1 and 6 tenths, so we want 
points greater than that and points less than 3 and 2 tenths. So we needed to shade this area here between lines T and M blue. Those represent all the points that are more than 1 and 6 tenths and less than 3 and 2 tenths from the Y axis. With a red pencil, we shade the points that are more than 8 tenths of a unit. That would be line A, representing 8 tenths of a unit, and less than 2 and 4 tenths of the units from the X axis. Again, these lines A and H are parallel to that X axis, and their Y coordinates are their distance. So we sh uh, shaded this, and of course now we have an area that is double shaded, which we'll refer to in the next slide. Moving right along, we're going to look at task E. Using a blue pencil, shade the re region that contains the points that are more than six tenths, one and six tenths units, and less than three and two tenths units from the y axis. So we want more than one and six tenths right over here, but one less than one or three and two tenths. So we're looking at this right here. So we want to shade the area between T and M with our blue pencil. And let's look at task F. It says using a red pencil, shade the area, or shade the region that contains the points that are more than two tenths more or eight tenths, so more than eight tenths, and less than two and four tenths. So we need to sh shade the area above here but below here. So we'll use our red. In our final task, G, is give the coordinates of a point that lies within or in the double shaded region. So what can I do here? I need to choose any of the points that are in this area here. And of course I could choose any of these points within this area. All you have to do is pick one coordinate and give that as your answer. So I'm just going to pick arbitrarily. I'll look at two comma 2, yeah, 2 for the x, 2 for the y, I inter it intersects right there, and we can see that it's in the area of the double shaded reason, region. There are a number of possible answers, but I'm going to give this one. And of course you could pick any number of answers as long as that point is greater in the double shaded area.